Welcome to the lecture on section 10.4, Applications of Maxima and Minima. Over the last few lectures, we've been seeing how to apply or to utilize derivatives to find optimum values of formulas or functions. Today, we're going to look at some applications of uh, these maxima and minima um, in specific business and social science app, um, problems. Let's look at our first problem. Here we have a simple problem where the formula is given. Um, and so all we have to do is really apply the derivative and also recognize some other factors. So here I'm going to read the problem. A new company begins production in 2015 with eight employees and the growth of the company over the next 10 years is predicted by the formula n of t equals 8 times the quantity of 1 plus 160t all divided by t squared plus 16 where n is the number of employees t years after 2015. Determine in what year the number of employees will be maximized and the maximum number of employees. Whenever you read a, whenever you have a word problem or an application problem, I highly suggest that you actually start with the last sentence. Here I put it in bold. Determine in what year the number of employees will be maximized and the maximum number of employees. When you start with the question, it helps us to start getting grounded in the context of the story. Um, and that's one of the toughest parts, I believe, for students in mastering these kind of application problems is they, they don't have the context or the story. So if you start with the question, then as you go through the story, you know what you're kind of looking for connections with. Since we're looking for a maximum, we know that we find that by taking the derivative. In this case, the, the, the formula is given to us, so it's quite um, straightforward. However, remember in the last section when we have a limited domain or our input, our input this time is t, which is the number of years after 2015. Notice that if you have a limited input, you not only compare the value where the derivative is zero, but you also check the values at the endpoints. Notice this time it tells us to find um, the growth of the company over the next 10 years. So we're going to check for some value of t when the derivative is 0, which we'll calculate. But we also need to calculate for t equals 0 and t equals 10. Okay, so let's begin the problem. The first thing we want to do um, is to find when the derivative, this is r prime, and I'm not sure why it says r prime. It should say n prime equals 0. Again, we also are going to find out when t equals 0 or t equals 10. It looks like all of my variables are wrong. That's just to make sure you're awake out there in TV land. Okay, so the first thing I do is find the derivative. Um, here I have a um, the derivative. It's easier if at first I actually multiply this through and I get 8 plus 8 times the second quotient. Notice we have a quotient rule. So it's the derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator times the numerator all over the denominator squared. So I get this value here, or this function here. I want to find when the derivative is set equal to 0. So I uh, notice that a fraction is 0 when the numerator is 0. So I don't even have to worry about the denominator. Another way of thinking about this is setting this whole thing equal to 0. The 8 goes away if I divide both sides by, zero, by 8. And then I can cross multiply, which again makes the denominator equal 0. Okay. And in any case, a fraction is only equal to 0 when the numerator is equal to 0. So that's what I've done here. I've set the numerator equal to 0, and I solved. I get t equals plus or minus 4. Well, since t is in years, notice I cannot use a negative value. We're not going backwards in time. This is in some Hollywood movie. So I plug this value in, n of 4, into my original equation. Remember, we're always looking for the maximums of the original equation, or minimums. So I always plug these values back into the original, and I get 168. But remember, I also have to con um, con compare to when the time is 0 or the time is 10 years. So I calculate both of those. n of 10 is 118. And I don't have n of 0. Where would that go? What, what would be the population at 0? Well, the population at 0 would be the starting population, right? Which should be 8 employees. 
and we can see that when we put zero in here that this goes to zero this fraction term goes to zero so I just am left with eight times one which is eight so between these three values 8 118 and 168 our derivative value is indeed um, the largest now be careful when we're stating this we have a maximum of 168 employees because that's what the n equals when the year is what 2019 okay because remember that t is equal to the number of years after 2015 so 2015 plus 4 is 2019 it's very important with applications that you interpret the results <clears throat> sometimes we have to develop the function or an equation from the problem statement in this case it is important to understand what is to be maximized or minimized again the last sentence and express that quantity as a function of one variable we're going to look at a problem now that has, has exactly this case. I'm going to read the last sentence first. And in fact, whoa, it says if the fence costs 15 and the, along the road and 10 foot along the two remaining sides that must be fenced, what dimensions of this rectangular field will minimize cost? So notice this very last part tells me everything I need to know. What dimensions of a rectangle will minimize cost? So I know I'm looking for the dimensions of a rectangle. It's easy to draw a rectangle, so that would be where I'd start. And I'm looking to minimize the cost. So there's something about this rectangle that's going to involve cost. So I'm, the first thing I'm going to do is draw a rectangle. I'm then going to write minimize cost next to it. And then I'm going to go back and read each sentence. A farmer needs to enclose a rectangle, rectangular pasture containing 1 1,600,000 1, square feet. Well, what is square feet? Square feet is area, so my rectangle has an area of 1,600,000. Another piece of information I'm going to write down. Now it's giving me more details. Suppose that along the road adjoining his property, uh, his property, he wants to use a more expensive fence. So one side of this rectangle that I've drawn, and I know you can't see anything yet, I've only got one final drawing here, I'm going to write road so I know which side that is. This way I'm breaking down the information as I read it, not trying to digest it all at once. It's kind of like having a nice big steak or whatever you like to eat and putting it all in your mouth at once. It is not enjoyable. Take it a bite at a time, and that's what we're doing with these word problems. Okay, so we have the road along one side. Let's find out what else and that he needs no fence on one side perpendicular to the road because a river bounds his property on that side. So on this left side or the right doesn't really matter. Perpendicular means at a right angle. I'm going to write river and I don't need any fence there because the river is there. Okay, so notice I have one side of the fence that's along the road. One side of the pasture is along a river and needs no fence. If the fence costs 15 feet $15 per foot along the road. I'm going to write that along the road, $15 per foot. And $10, foot, $10 per foot along the two remaining sides. This is along the side opposite the river and along the side opposite the road. What dimensions must be of his rectangular field will minimize his cost? So let's look at the diagram we've drawn there. So now we see everything on this diagram except for the value of the area that I mentioned. Remember that the area of that river is um, 1,600,000. All right, so let's figure out now that we have our diagram if we can figure out the equation for cost. So notice again in this diagram I'm going to need x amount of fence at $15, y amount of fence at $10, and x amount of fence at $10 as well. So 15x plus 10y plus 10x is going to equal our cost function, right? 15x plus 10y plus 10x equals our cost function. Wow, that was a mistake there that I didn't want to do to show you the whole problem. So let's take this slowly. I'd hoped that that would build. So again here, we just looked around the sides and we figured out our cost function. If we simplify this, we get 25x plus 10y. This is our cost function we want to minimize, but notice there's two variables. 
So we want this equation, we want our cost in terms of one variable, so we need to look for what's called a constraint that involves both variables, solve for one variable, and then substitute it in this equation. Okay? Remember that we were given the area of this pasture or the area of this rectangle, and that's a formula that we all know. Area of a rectangle equals width times length. So x times y equals that area, and here we see, so xy equals 1.6 million. So if I substitute for y, I get y equals 1.6 million divided by x. Okay, this is what y equals. So notice now I can put this value back into my cost equation for y. So I get my cost in terms of x alone equals 25x, as we saw before, plus instead of 10y, we have 10 times 1,600,000 over x, so this becomes 16 million over x. Now I have my cost function in terms of one variable. I can take the derivative, it's very simple, by making this x to the power of negative 1. Remember, negative exponents mean reciprocals, so I can rewrite this as 16 million x to the negative 1, and then it becomes an easy derivative. Okay, so I get the derivative of cost is 25 minus 16 million over x squared. If I set that equal to 0 and start solving that, I take the 16 million to the other side, and I multiply both sides by x squared, and I solve, and I get to the point where I get x equals plus or minus 800. Again, since x is a distance, we're going to discard the negative 800 and only use the positive 800, which again, notice, only gives us the length of the pasture, and we want the length and the width. So here I plug this back into my formula for y, 1.6 million over x, and I get that the, the width is 2,000. So the dimensions of the pasture that minimizes cost is 800 by 200 feet. Make sure you write units in there as well. This is very important with application problems. All right, let's look at another problem. And this one is a little bit more confusing. All right, if I look at the last sentence, it says, assume that half of the items from each production run are stored. That's not the question. So let's go back up one more sentence. If each production run consists of X items, find X so that the total costs of production and storage are minimized. Looking through this, just kind of scanning, I don't see any equations. So it means we're going to have to figure out equations. But we're trying to minimize the total costs of production and storage. So that's the first thing I'm going to write. Minimize total costs. Second thing I'm going to write is that total costs equal production costs and storage costs. These are both pretty straightforward. Okay, so total cost equals production cost and storage cost. I guess I should have done some clicking before, huh? Now production costs, if we look back at the problem, it says we need a million items during the year and that the preparation costs are $800 for each production run. So I know that I have to pay $800 every time I do a production run. So all I have to do is figure out how many runs I need to do per year. Okay. So on this first part of the equation, well, hold on there. Plus, if you notice down further, it costs the company $6 to produce each item. So there's also a cost per item for production as well. So this is the number of items times the cost per item. Well, on the first side of the equation, the number of runs times the cost per run. Well, we have the cost per run, which is $800. Okay. Now, how many runs do we need to do? Well, we have a million items, and we know that X is the number of items in each run. So notice if X was, let's say, 10,000, we would need, uh, what, about 100 runs, because 1 million divided by 10,000 is 100. So the number of runs we ha need is 1 million divided by x, the number in each run. Okay, And that's what we're trying to figure out, is how many items we should put in each run to minimize our cost. So we, here we get 1 million over x times 800. 
Here we get the number of items times the cost of each item. Again, remember it costs $6 to produce each item. That's the six. How many items do we need? That's in the very first sentence. We need a million items. So this equation becomes pretty simple. One million over x times 800 plus one million times six, and I get this equation here. Now let's look at our storage costs. We also know it costs a dollar to store an item for up to a year. So our storage costs are just the average number stored, or the whatever we store, times the storage cost per item. The last line says that assume that half of the items from each production run are stored. Well, each production run has x items in it. So if half of them are stored, notice that we have x over 2, half of each production run, are stored times the dollar, the cost. So now we have both of the elements for our total cost function. Production costs and storage costs. So we add these together to get our total cost function, which is what we're trying to minimize. We now take the derivative of that. And now be careful here. A lot of people get confused with the derivative of x over 2. Notice that x over 2 is just the same thing as 1 half x, which means the derivative is just 1 half. Okay. Once I set this equal to 0, I get x squared equals, this is cross multiplying, picking the negative 1 half. And I get x equals plus or minus 40,000. Again, we can't have... Um, negative items in a production run. So our production run um, is minimized, our costs are minimized when each production has 40,000 items in it. Here we've done the second derivative test just to confirm that it is indeed a minimum.